What's going on YouTube? Shark here, and today I'm testing a new revision of the LD Moss palette. So there's a few things that have changed between this one and my previous palette. Uh, the most obvious is the DC choke and the transformer type. But more importantly, the output tune is quite a bit different than it was on my previous palette. So on the previous palette, I was using this transformer, which is a Type 61, big old chunky cores. Um, so there's a reason that I deviated away from this, and that's because it's Type 61. So I decided to go with a Type 67 and see what happens. And uh, so far, it's working out really well. It's working out really well. My harmonics are better than ever, and my power output is better than ever. So we're winning. We're winning. It cost an LD MOS chip in the process. Where is that one? So actually just a few minutes ago, I popped this one here. And uh, as you can see, it looks fine, but it was a gate failure. And I think it was due to heat because I was using the good old goopy white heat sink compound, which is, uh, in my opinion, completely insufficient for these LD MOS devices. This is, this is a different type of failure. This is a, a drain failure. So this is what happens when you put too much current into the device. When it just starts eating up too much current, the drain shorts out and it pops the uh, pops one of the tabs off of there. But this one was a gate failure, so I wasn't drawing too much power out of it. I think it just failed because of heat. Um, <laughs> you may have noticed the goofiness that I've got going on right now. I've got a pan. I've got my heat sink sitting in a pan of water as an evaporative cooling solution. Um, hey. It's freaking hot in here, and this is all I had on hand, so, yeah, make fun of it if you want, but it works, okay? Anyway, new revision. Let's fire it up and see what she do. Okay, where am I at? Um, I got the radio over here with the audio signal generator putting 200 hertz tone into the radio, and that's coming through this attenuator, through this cable, into here. Um, the output of the board is this cable right here going straight into the bird meter and then that's going over to the dummy load. Um, we've got a 5k slug on there right now and right now we're in peak mode. Let's start out in average with no modulation. I guess I better turn the bias on. A little bias. Alright, so that's our carrier. It's uh, about 400 watts. And let's turn on our modulation. That's modulation on. Alright, about 1600 peak watts from a 400 watt carrier. Very good linearity. Very good linearity. Uh, what are we doing over here? Let's go back over to the peak meter. And I will crank that up. Twenty one hundred. Close to it. A little over two grand. Um, honestly, it seems like it's got more to give, but uh, I'm a little scared right now. You know, every time you pop one of these things, it's 250 bucks down the drain, and it kind of puts the fear of God in you. You know, if if you're working on a budget, <laughs> like I do this shit for fun, man. I don't have 250 bucks to waste all the time. That's, that's my fun money for at least a week. You know what I mean? Uh, probably more than a week. Probably like two weeks worth of fun money. But anyway. Um, it's doing 2K. No problem. But more importantly, it's doing it cleanly. So I gotta wait a little bit in between key ups just to make sure this thing doesn't overheat because I, I think that's what led to my last failure and I'm just being super cautious here. Um, so this is... All right. That's our 2100. That's what our waveform looks like. That is really decent compared to what my other, what my last uh, design was doing. So the last one was based off of the NXP reference circuit, and um, it was flat topping at 2K. The waves were just flat topping. Uh, the linearity, the power output, it was just gone at 2K. There was nothing more to give. So seeing that, that I'm actually getting smooth peaks at, uh, at 2100 peak watts. That's really encouraging. That's 
that's a big step up in my opinion from where I was before. Um, because where it was before, it was peaking and flat topping at 2K, which means that you need to run it at less than 2K. And I don't want to run it at less than 2K, I want to run more. More, 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 more. Um, I'm prob probably sacrificing some reliability by doing that. And, uh, you know, time will tell. Uh, you know, I, I anticipate popping more of these, just I'm trying not to do it today. I already popped one. Anyway, um, I wanted to show the harmonics on it. Let me see if I can do that with the math button. Sorry, I have to set this up because it's not uh, wrong way. It's not already set up. Okay, so we're on our center is 54 megahertz. We're 25 megahertz per division side to side. Um, what else we got going on here? Okay, our scale is 10 decibels. So each vertical sc the vertical scale is 10 decibels. Um, I think we're pretty much good to go. Let's just go up here and turn math on. Okay. Um, I got my modulation on. I'm going to set my trigger a little differently. Like I said, I'm trying to only run this palette short periods of time. Let's see if I can trigger it a little higher. How about that right there. There we go. Okay. That's a sample of the harmonics at 2K PEP. So what is I what I did is I triggered up at the tallest peak and then I took a single shot of that. So I moved my trigger up to the tallest peak. Um, I won't be able to zoom out and show you because it, it only takes a certain sample length. But um, I triggered at the tallest peak, took a single shot, and then what the scope did is it ran an FFT function on the sample that was within that single shot. And that's what we're seeing on the spectrum analyzer right now. So let me adjust this and we'll take a closer look. Let me get that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, sorry, can't answer your call right now. In the middle of the video. Um, so this is, uh, the center of this is 54 megahertz. So that's our second harmonic in the center there. This is our primary. This is our carrier. So our carrier being up at this line, our second harmonic is 30 dB down. Our third harmonic is 30 dB down. Our fourth harmonic is way down in the nosebleeds and our fifth harmonic is also 50 dB down or more. Um, now this isn't a 100% true representation for one reason. Um, this is coming from a bird sampler slug on my dummy. I don't know if I can show you. We'll try. So now we're under the desk. That's where that cable's coming from is this bird sampler slug. Now, the reason that this is not totally accurate is because that sampler slug doesn't sample all frequencies at the same output. So if you put one watt in at one megahertz, you're going to get a different uh, amplitude coming into the oscilloscope than you would with 100 megahertz at one watt. And uh, if you look at the graph, the curve actually goes like this as frequency goes up. So the response gets higher. Um, I haven't written down the numbers, but as soon as uh, I'm done with this test, I'm going to go down and, and measure that sampler with the VNA. So when you connect your VNA to the sampler, what you can do is you can run the output through the sampler, and then you can return the sample port back into port 2, and you can see the curve of uh, the sampler's response. And based on that, you can tell how inaccurate these measurements are going to be and you can compensate each one of these values. So what I can do is I can go over to the sampler and say, okay, if my 27 megahertz is here at 0 dB, let's just say it's at 0 dB, where is 54 megahertz going to be? Where is 81 point something megahertz? Where's 108 megahertz going to be? And then you can add or subtract from these values. Now this being a 100 megahertz scope, typically at 100 megahertz you start to hit the 3 dB roll off point. So anything over 100 megahertz, I'm going to assume the scope is not capable. Um, but anyway, that, that's kind of my measurement procedure. But just judging by this, this is a fantastic result compared to what I've had in the past. In the past, I usually have one spike that's up here in the 20, 
25 range and it, it's just it's better and I'm super stoked about that and uh, the nature of that sampler slug um, if 27 megahertz is down here 54 megahertz is going to be up here 70 80 80 something megahertz is going to be up here so because of that sampler these higher harmonics are actually reading higher than they really are because the sampler responds to those higher frequencies with a stronger output to the oscilloscope um, like I said I don't I don't remember how much I think it was like 5 dB something like that a 5 dB difference between 27 and 54 but it's kind of irrelevant um, I'm just showing you what I'm getting and uh, it's pretty damn good in my opinion it's the best LD MOS that I've seen and uh, that's not saying much because I haven't seen many LD MOSs but anywho let me uh, shut off some fans over here and talk about how I accomplished this power output and this improvement um, at full disclaimer I think what I've done here is make this device less durable so previously it was detuned it was tuned for less out power output than it's getting now and uh, with this tune I don't think this device is going to be capable of uh, handling those stupid high SWRs I don't think it's going to be capable of handling that I think I would have to detune it to get that um, but I can't prove that I don't know that for a fact right now and I'm probably never going to test that that's just a hunch but the way that I improved the tune on this um, I haven't actually done a video on it but I'm going to um, with push-pull amplifiers basically what you can do is you can pull um, the device out of there if you have two transistors you pull both transistors if you have an LD MOS you pull the transistor out and then you measure across the transformer where the transistors will be connected uh, you measure that with a VNA and you connect the output over to a 50 ohm dummy load and uh, what that tells you is it tells you the impedance that the transistor is going to see so this one is seeing in the 5 ohms neighborhood where my previous design was up in the 7 ohms neighborhood of 7 ohms and by lowering the impedance I'm essentially increasing the power output um, but you know don't get any ideas and go out there and, and lower the impedance on it and expect it to work because there's a limit to everything and I think I'm honestly brushing up against the limit of this device um, just judging by what I'm seeing on the spectrum analyzer what I'm seeing on the power consumption um, you know the thing that really kills these devices is drain current um, you know you, you pull too much power through them and they just gone and no warning no nothing just gone and uh, like I said I think I'm on the limit of that but it's working and uh, I'm proud that uh, my little bit of effort and, and knowledge that I've gained over the past year has gotten me to this point where I can actually tune something and it doesn't blow up in my face so anyway um, yeah I just thought I'd make a video about that because I'm excited and I love it when a plan comes together anyway I'm back out for now, Mud Duck Sharky, and I'll catch you around.